Good morning, everyone. Welcome to attend our lecture today. Uh, before we start our lecture, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Yongchun Luo. I got my DVN uh, from Taiwan and my PhD degree from university from Mississippi State University. My dissertation was about uh, infectious bronchitis virus. After I got my PhD degree, I went to University of Florida. Over there, we are doing AIDS gene therapy research. Today's lecture uh, will briefly introduce two parts. The first topic is ticks. The second part uh, will be canine babesiosis. Ticks are often mistaken for insects, but they are actually small arachnids. There are roughly 900, uh, spe 900 tick species around the world. Ticks are well known blood sucking external parasite of human pests, livestock, and wild animals. They are also vectors of a wide variety of disease causing organism to animals and are second only to mosquitoes in terms of public health uh, importance. Since most of the ticks belong e to either hard ticks or soft ticks, so how do we differentiate hard a hard tick from a soft tick? From the morphology standpoint, the mouse part of hard tea is visible from above, but it is not for the soft tick. Also, hard tea has dorsal shear, which is absent in soft tick. Some other different features between hard ticks and soft ticks are this in this table. And they include the lympho stage. For lympho stage for hard tea, it only have one. But for soft tea, it have several lympho stage. And also, hard tea only have one, uh, uh, one adult blood meals and then the adult will feed feeding for several days but for soft ticks the adult have several uh, blood meals and each blood meal will only stay like, like 30 to 60 minutes and hard tea will only lay egg once but soft tick will lay eggs several times there are four developmental forms of the, uh, during their life cycle. Uh, they include egg stage, larva stage, lymph stage, and adult stages. The majority of hard tea species uh, have, have uh, three holistic life cycles. And that means once they hatch from the egg, uh, at that stage is the uh, Larva, larva stage, the larva will find the first host and then after blood feeding, they are drop off to the ground and mold into the limb and then the limb will find the second host have a blood feeding and then drop off again and then mold into the adults. Uh, during adult stage, the both male of and female will find their final host after blood feeding, mating, and then they, uh, they'll drop off to the ground, and female will eventually lay the eggs on the ground and then die after. Although most, 
the majority of the teeth have a three host life cycle. Some of the teeth only have like a two host t uh, life cycle or one host life cycle. That means during their life cycle, they only need two host or one host. So how to how to uh, hardly find their hosts? Teeth. Uh, tick larvae usually remain on the ground where they encounter the potential hosts and nymphs remain on the ground or climb grassy vegetation from which they are able to grab a passing host. As for the adult ticks, uh, they may remain on the ground but more commonly climb up vegetation from which they grab a passing host. And they they have a specific uh, behavior, we call it uh, quest questing. The questing, uh, during the questing, ticks use the, their harder organs to sense the like a vibration, carbon dioxide, or humidity of the surrounding area to sense if there are hosts uh, close by. Different Ticks have a different preferred host. As a result, uh, they, they will also have a different preferred habitats. But uh, generally, uh, they are sus susceptible to desertation. So they need a habitat with relatively high humidity to survive. In general, ticks tend to be found in wooded areas, tall grass or brush, the edge where woods and lawns meet, in the deep litter, underground cover plants and around stone walls and wood piles where small mam mammals live. Uh, this figure shows uh, the distribution of some tick-borne pathogens and their, their band transmitted better, take better uh, around the world. Here, uh, this show the, like a disease of uh, anaplasmosis, nine diseases, babesiosis, and uh, creamy Congo hemorrhagic fever, and tick bone encephalitis, and their men take batters, how they distribute around the world. Since ticks can transmit lots of different pathogens to humans and pets, so how, how do we prevent the tick bite? That's important. The best way to prevent tick bites is to avoid certain, in, uh, certain habitats during the peak of tick season. Also, you can apply some preventive care medicine to your pets. Another way is after visiting woody areas or spending lots of time outdoors, just give dog a tick check, looking him over for any embedded parasite. So since the best way to prevent tick bite is to avoid certain habitat, also, applying preventive care medicine is an important tool. This table lists uh, some of the protection medicine for the puppies. Um, and then we are going to the second part, the babesiosis in dogs. Uh, this, of course, is a tick bone disease caused by in by intro uh, intro cystic uh, protozoan parasite of genus Babesia. They can be further divided into large and small Babesia species. The large Babesia species are three to seven micron in length. For small Babesia species are uh, one to three micron in length. 
The most common largest species of Babesia in best dogs is Babesia canis. Uh, it has three subspecies, but currently uh, we think they are, they are actually three distinct species, uh, include Babesia canis, Babesia borgeli, Babesia lossi. And for small species of Babesia, uh, the most common one is Babesia gibsoni, and the other species is Babesia conradi. Babesia borghese is transmitted by brown dog tick. This species is commonly diagnosed in warm, humid regions of the world and has been found in Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, and America. And Babesia canis uh, is transmitted by Ornate dog tick. It has been reported more frequently from Europe countries. The, the incidence of infection is highest in the fall and spring season and most commonly found in rural or sub uh, suburban areas that are adjacent to. Uh, Paris or woodland that provide suitable habitat for the pig. As for Babesia lossi, uh, is transmitted by yellow dog tick. This species is limited to Africa, with the vast majority of reports coming from South Africa, and the incidence of infection is highest during the summer months. For Babesia gibsoni, it's transmitted uh, by hemophilite, sorry, for, uh, it's transmitted by hemophilis. It usually found in Africa, Asia, Australia, North and South America and Europe. And in, in U.S., where the competent ticks better are not endemic, so the gyp Babesia gypsum infection can occur in dogs engaged in fighting activities, especially in American pit bull terriers. For Babesia conradi. The tick transmitting the disease is, has not been identified. They are previously, re previously referred to as California isolate of Babesia gypsoni, but right now they are uh, classified into the other species. It's mainly found in California. This table summarizes uh, common Babesia species, including the large Babesia species and small Babesia species, and their vectors, distribution areas, and also the main clinical fi finding for those uh, different species in just for your references. The transmission uh, route for the Babesia, the main transmission loop is heart by a heart T trans transmission. In addition to the heart T transmission, uh, they also they may also tra transmit the disease by a fighting, blood transfusion uh, from the infected dogs, or if the mother dog have the uh, infection, she may trans transmit the disease to their offspring by a transplacental transmission. Uh, as for the life cycle of Babesia, uh, we will uh, we'll just take a look at the Babesia canis. 
when ticks are involved in the transmission, the sporozoid uh, will be resist into tick saliva. Once the dog, once the tick feed on dogs, those sporozoids will uh, penetrate, will get into the bloodstream and attach and endocytosed by the RBC. Inside the RBC cells, the, uh, they undergo a sexual reproduction and produce the daughter cells. Those daughter cells uh, will infect new RBC. Then a naive tick ingests the infected RBC. Once inside the uh, ticks, those uh, those pathogens will, un will undergo a sexual phase of repro reproduction inside ticks mean gut. Then the zygote will, in will embed epithelia of the tick gut and then form the okinates. Those will then embed either salivary gland or the ovary of the ticks. Once they get into the salivary gland of the tick, they will undergo another round of sexual reproduction. And the Babesia uh, inside the ticks, they, they have a two different, also have a two different transmission form. One is tr transsexual transmission. That means the pathogen will, will pass to the different life stage of the ticks. And also they have a trans or varial transmission, means uh, the once the, the female ticks uh, got the Babesia infection, the, the Babe it will uh, trans transfer the pathogen into their next generations. Once dogs have uh, babesiosis, the incubation period uh, varies from 10 to 21 days for Babesia canis and 14 to 28 days for Babesia gypsoni. A wide variety of clinical signs ranging in severity from a sudden collapse with systemic shock to a hemolytic uh, crisis to a subtle and slowly progression infection with no apparent clinical signs. Uh, most notable include abnormally dark urine, fever, weakness, pale mucous membranes, depression, a swollen lymph node, and an enlarged spleen. Also can, uh, when you do the blood and urine test, it will reveal anemia, thrombocytopenia. More specifically, for different uh, Babesia species, the clinical sign will be a subtle difference. Like for Babesia rossi, it's a very violent and cause, uh, causes hyperacute and acute disease. For Babesia morgeli, uh, once the dog infects this uh, species, the cl usually clinically inapparent infection in mature dogs. Subclinical infections are common in adult dogs, but puppies tend to present with marked anemia. As for Babesia canis, it's a it's a more variable pathogenicity. Uh, it's intermediate between Babesia rossi and Babesia vulgari. In small, in small Babesia, like Babesia gypsoni, the infection usually follow either hyperacute, acute, or chronic causes. The acute cause is most common 
and is characterized by fever, lethargy, hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, lymphadenopathy, and splenomegaly. The other small babesia, uh, babesia conrade, uh, is considered to be more pathogenic than babesia gypsoni. So how do we diagnose uh, if the dog got the infection of babesia or not? Usually, uh, the most easy one in clinical is doing a blood smear, uh, blood smear check uh, using the microscope. Under the microscope, uh, if the sporozoids can be observed, and you can see the size or shape difference between large and small uh, babesia. But this diagnostic method is not uh, sensitive enough, so the diagnosis rate would, would be very low. The other one for the diagnosis is serology test that include FA staining of the organism or ELISA test to check the circulating Babesia agent or antibody or use a rapid, rapid kit to detect the antibody of the infection. But for the antibody, even the antibody uh, is positive doesn't mean uh, the dog is currently under the infection. It may be the, an old infection. And also, the antibody develop uh, a little bit late during the uh, infection course. Like usually take like a, uh, 10 to 14 days for IgG to, to develop. So it takes some time to detect the antibody. And the third method is PCR method. PCR uh, is detecting the nuclear acid of the uh, Babesia. This, this method is the most, with the highest uh, sensitivity and specificity. And also it can uh, differentiate which species of the Babesia cause the infection. And it only takes a, a very short period to have this test done. Once you, uh, once you uh, make the diagnosis was made, then the treatment usually includes three parts. The first one is to eliminate the parasite. Uh, then in this way, we. Usually, uh, we need to use the ant anti-protozoan dr drug to uh, treat the dog. The second one is, uh, if the dog have severe anemia, then we usually need to do a blood transfusions for the patients. The third one is, uh, de uh, depends de depending on the clinical side of the dogs, they may need to additional supportive care for the complications and metabo metabolic derangements. Uh, this table is, is a summary of the current uh, treatment protocols with the uh, anti protozoal agents. Like for large Babesia, usually uh, it's easier to handle compared to the small Babesia. And in the small Babesia, like Babesia gypsoni, if we choose the azithromycin and atovacuin, this uh, treatment is uh, quite effective. But one thing need to be noticed is that some of the Bab Babesia gypsoni may produce may produce the anti drug and the resistant gene to the autovacuum. So sometimes you may need to check if this 
infect agents carrying the resistant gene to the drug to make sure the treatment is effective. And since there is no vaccine available currently, so the best way to prevent the dog to your dog infect the Babesia uh, infect Babesia is to prevent or reduce exposure to the tick vector. Uh, you can just the same as uh, similar to the way to control the tick uh, infect bite and also like uh, applying the preventive uh, preventive medicine and also if the dog need to um, uh, need to undergo blood transfusion the blood donors should be screened and found free of better bone diseases including the babesia uh, that's for today's uh, lecture if you have any question you can drop the questions and we will have a discussion thank you
Welcome back to our Q&A sessions. Uh, we find there are two interesting questions need to be addressed uh, in this session. The first question is, is there any vaccine available to against uh, tick-borne pathogens? And actually, there, there is a tick called Australian paralysis tick, uh, which are very, which are very, the one of the most virulent tick in the world. During the feeding, the adult female tick can inject neural toxins into the host, which can progress to paralysis and death if not treated. And fortunately, uh, there's a vaccine available to protect humans and animals uh, from this disease to occur in Australia. And the second question is, will the cats uh, infect the babesiosis? And the answer is yes, cats can also infect babesiosis. There are some different species of Babesia has been known can infect a uh, cat, like Babesia felis, Babesia cati, and also Babesia pantherates. Besides cats, wild cats like uh, panthers, lions can also be infected by those kind of uh, Babesia species. Besides, the, uh, besides that, cats ca uh, there are also some case reports uh, about cats infect Babesia canis. So cats definitely can infect the Babesiosis. And that's for uh, our presentation today. Thank you for attending us.